All right, guys, we're still at the My.com booth, and this time we're checking out my personal most anticipated game of the show, and that's Skyforge. This is coming from the Alids team. It's got a lot of backing behind it, and we've got the man right here to give us a little bit more of a detail on what Skyforge is. Can you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about this game? All right, yeah, my name is Eric DeMilt. I'm a development director at Obsidian Entertainment. We're collaborating with the Alids team on Skyforge, and we're handling uh, some additional class design, instance design, as well as westernization. So Skyforge is a brand new MMORPG developed by the team that did Allods Online. Uh, the Allods team, they're part of the MailRU group in Russia. Uh, super talented team, great pedigree games behind them. Silent Storm, one of my personal favorites. I love it if you haven't checked it out, super good game. Uh, IL-2 Sturmovic, great stick and rider flight sim. Rage of Mages, Heroes of Might and Magic 5, and then of course Allods Online. City Entertainment, right, we're known for Knights of the Old Republic 2, Fallout New Vegas, recently released South Park. Uh, Stick of Truth, great game, um, and Skyforge itself, right? So it's a new fantasy adventure, MMORPG. Player's goal is to go from being an immortal, right? You're powerful and immortal in these games. You're not going to die, right? Permadeath would suck. Um, to being a god, right? And uh, that's really inherent to the gameplay system. So, uh, you know... Well, why do they have to become the god to begin with? Are so they... What happened to their current right. god? <laughs> so uh, the story of the world is once, you know, you had, like you do, a kind of benevolent god protecting the world, right? Protecting it from invade and invasion. Uh, gods derive their power from their worshippers, right? So when a god vanishes, as Aelon's god did, right, other hostile gods are going to come to the planet, try and control it, take the worshippers, build their power. So now the planet's under attack. You have the immortals of the world are fighting to defend it. They're using the divine observatory. It's a device they've built to show them the pleas for help from the players or uh, from the mortals on the world, right? And this is sort of your central adventuring hub. This is that map you see where you see all the uh, adventures open to you. Um, players going to that, seeing what adventures are open to them, PvP, PvE, dynamic content, um, and they're able to go to those, help the mortals gain their prestige, upgrade their characters. All right, so is the entire world going to be based off of this instant system, or will they also just be able to travel out places and do things in an open environment? So the entire world's built on one central server per geographic region of the world. We have a massive server that can support millions of players. That content is then broken up in, into instances. Some of those are solo instances, right, very linear. Some of those are group instances, very linear again. Some are big, huge open world instances where you're going to be playing with multiple players at the same time. Okay, and uh, beyond that, there's probably going to be like a level unlock, I'm guessing, on which instances you can play to. Is there going to be any incentive to make people go back and replay the same instances? So um, that one's a difficult one, right? <laughs> Incentivizing grind is always uh, a challenge, right? Um, players don't want to play the same content. Players also consume content way faster than we can make it. Uh, so we do have a bit of a non-traditional take on leveling in MMOs. We've abandoned the conventional idea of MMO leveling, leveling in classes. You have a character uh, who is developed through the UI called the Ascension Atlas. And this is all the character development opportunities open to you, including classes. There are two levels to that. Um, so as you play through the game and you're getting your prestige, your gems, right, you're spending those points uh, as you see fit, develop, developing out your character any way you want. Uh, the game will ship with over 10 classes. There'll be three of them unlocked at the beginning. You can also go to the lower level of the Ascension Atlas and develop out those classes. So say you're enjoying playing the Cryomancer, you really want to develop that class out, you're going to develop that out. But if you want to switch uh, over to another class, right, your progression in your character is still saved with your character. So it's not like you've got to go back to level one Paladin and replay all that content again. You're still at that prestige level um, and that, that grade master across your entire class so you can explore those things as you see fit it gives you thousands of combinations and we do give players the ability to go through play different content if they want or replay content if they want to re-bob for certain uh, drops or they're looking for certain gems to open uh, different things in the atlas so let's talk about that a little bit mm -hmm. so there's different gems that you use to unlock these different class paths how do you acquire them and how many are there so uh, right now there's three types of gems that we've shown uh, rubies of strength Emeralds of life and sapphires of knowledge. And those uh, unlock different types of rewards, right? So strength is typically, the rubies of strength are typically offensive uh, abilities or perks. Uh, the sapphires of knowledge are typically stats, uh, things like that, new abilities. And the emeralds of life are more focused on defensive upgrades, 
uh, things like that. So, but those are mixed throughout the Atlas. So there's upgrade nodes all along the way and it's really up to you as a player to decide what fits your play style, what are you interested in developing, um, and where do you want to go, right? Are you more interested in developing out your crowd control skills? Are you more interested in developing out your overarching player character's stats and abilities? Or are you more interested in pursuing that new class that you've just unlocked? So for our viewers, this system looks a lot like the Path of Exile system, but out in space and really crazy with a lot of winding paths instead of being centralized. It's going to take a lot of time to dig into and fully understand, but I'd like to talk a little bit about the combat in your system and how you're really setting yourselves apart with that. Okay. So the combat is my personal favorite aspect of the game. It's the thing that drew me to it. Uh, the first time I played it. It's an action combat system, so unlike a lot of MMOs where you just walk up to a mob, target them and then you're you're running your buttons which is a lot of fun right i'm not uh you know it's it's different right it's it's a gameplay um action combat in skyforge is much more fast-paced it's more inspired by console action games where you're moving around a lot a lot of positioning and limiting the number of actions you have so you're using your left and right mouse button a lot mouse look targeting the target you're focused on is the one you're going to hit with your abilities then another unique aspect to it is that combat feel changes a lot between classes. So if you're playing a cryomancer, uh, it's more about left and right mouse button are doing single target or AOEs, and then press and hold is getting you different cast results and using different amounts of energy, where that same uh, character playing a paladin is more mindful of what's going on with their combo. So left mouse button is going through a three button combo rotation as you're clicking it because you like to rapid tap, but it's also changing the state of the activity on your right mouse button each time. So maybe uh, two left clicks and then a right click is gonna give you an AOE uh, rather than just a finishing attack on that mob. And that's true for all the classes. We really try and distinguish them, maintain that fast action, whether it's melee or range, give them a lot of unique over the top abilities great things, ultimate things, things that are on long cooldowns but make you just feel awesome when you lay waste to mobs, um, finishers, uh, you name it. And beyond that, you even have multiple weapons on a single class, so on the fly you can change up your skill bar, is that right? Um, so we don't have multiple weapons on a single class. The classes are single weapon, right? That's sort of your defining feature. When you change classes, your weapon's gonna change. Um, some classes will have weapons with multiple firing modes or multiple uh, states. For example, the Gunner, uh, one of our demo's first personal favorites. Uh, he has a machine gun. It also has a mode that fires as a plasma cannon, right? Doing massive damage, requires a certain amount of energy, and also has a mortar mode, right? Which fires rockets, and those are super fun, great to use as AOEs. Uh, but when you're firing in the mortar mode, you can't move. So if there's a mob that's you know tanking you or rushing you, you're gonna get run over. Kind of creates some comedy situations. And on that note, it might be a little bit early to talk about this, mm -hmm. but with all the crazy flashes and explosions going on, mm -hmm. do you have plans for incorporating PvP into this? Yeah, PvP is definitely a focus of the game, right? It's what players want to do. You'll even see it when we're trying to demo it, right? We're, we're showing off a two-player gameplay instance, PvP instance here today. We'd rather be wailing on each other while we're waiting for the next group of people to show up. Um, it's fun. It's in the game. It's something we test a lot. We play with a lot. It's also a lot of fun over the top with the big crazy visuals. The cryomancer, he's got this giant snowball he sends towards people. It's kind of slow. So you see this snowball sort of rolling through a PVP battlefield and it's hilarious watching people get out of the way and the choices they'll make trying to avoid it and often put themselves in more danger. Awesome, thanks for your time. No you problem. have closed beta coming up soon? Uh, we do, we do and we're accepting signups on skyforge.com now. Thank Boy. you. Thank you.